Today we have a young man from Canada who's a worship leader in Jerusalem. Jess Cantalon is the young adult pastor and worship leader of King of Kings Community Church here in Jerusalem. I sat down with him and asked him what brought him here to Israel. Um, I was uh, I actually grew up here. I was uh, my parents were doing a young adult um, student exchange uh, back in the early 80s from Canada to um, to Israel, and they uh, they. They were bringing students to um, to kibbutzes. They did over a million man hours, and the Israeli government had a meeting with them. They sat down with the Ministry of uh, Interior, the Ministry of Tourism, another minister of something, and uh, they said uh, they told my parents that they, you know, they can't very well do uh, this kind of exchange program without living in Israel. And so they said, "Come live in Israel, and when you come, we want you to start a church," and which is unheard of in uh, in the uh, you know in, in a Jewish state to have the government asked you to start a church and so they did. So how long have you been here? Well I was seven years as a kid here and uh, so from 81 through 88 and then uh, this past time I came with my family. Uh, we had returned with, with my uh, my parents uh, and I and my brother and sister returned to Canada in uh, 88 and they're, they're all still there. We returned 16 years later and we've been here for almost two and a half years now. Mm. So what do you do here in the land? I'm uh, my initial, uh, I guess my 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 title is um, uh, is young adults pastor, although it's a volunteer uh, position. Um, uh, my official position in the land is a, is a student. That's my uh, I'm studying my master's in theology, and uh, but at uh, at King of Kings Community, uh, I work with young adults, um, and uh, you know I, I basically pastor them. Mm. So, what's your heart for the young people here in Israel? Uh, you know, that's that's a funny question because well, it's not a funny question. It's a good question. It's just that uh, in Israel, a lot of the people are, uh, you know, have this this real passionate call for for Israel, and um, that's not how it worked for my wife and I. I mean, you know, we Israel's fine. It's always been on my map because this is the place where I grew up. So for me, it's just as valid of a place to minister as let's say Toronto, Canada is because it's you know it's it's where I grew up. It's home to me. So. Uh, so my heart for you know uh, the the kids, the youth, the young adults in Israel um, is first and foremost as a friend and as a fellow sort of a brother. You know, I went to Hebrew public school, so that's that's um, they're kind of my brothers, my friends, and um, and uh, it's also you know since we've been here, the Lord has been growing our heart for this place and recognizing that Israel uh, isn't just a, another country that the Lord has basically poured out His uh, his grace uh, uh, in bringing them back, uh, not because they're righteous, uh, but because he's graceful, and uh, and uh, and so you know I have the I, I see that there's significance in, in ministering here uh, in the sense where uh, I don't know make some kind of some kind of lasting impact. I mean there's significance ministering in Canada too, or in Toronto, or in England, or wherever you are. It's, uh, it doesn't really make a a huge difference, but uh, there is something about this place. It's like a it's like the, <laughs> you know, it, I, I call it a small pond, but the deepest pond in the world. Mm. So what are some of the needs that you have here in Israel? Well, you know, it depends how you look at it. There's, there's, two, two, there's two, I guess, sets of youth, young adults. There's those who are, um, at, at King of Kings, when we deal with a lot of internationals who come in and out, uh, it's a very transient community. As far as the Israeli uh, scene is concerned, uh, there are those who are have, are maybe second generation messianic believers, uh, and so they're they're dealing with you know um, parents who've who've come through uh, this who who've made Aliyah have moved to Israel. This is a, a place where they are um, you know they they have an affinity to um, and uh, and so but the, the youth and the young adults are like first generation born in Israel. And so they're, they're like the fruit of this Aliyah, and they're very much identifying with Israelis and normal Israeli culture, whereas their parents came in as foreigners, and uh, and not only foreigners in in uh, in language, but also foreigners in faith. Even though they haven't, they they say, "Well, I'm a Jewish believer." Uh, the Jews themselves, they say, "Well, you're not, 
if you're you're a Christian, you're not a Jew. Mm. I said, no, 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 but we're Jewish. You know, we're we actually we believe that that Yeshua is Messiah. That's all. That's the only difference. <laughs> you know, but we believe he's a Jewish Messiah. He is your Messiah. Mm. You know, but they're sort of stuck in in this kind of uh, crisis of identity. They don't know. It's hard because they they've moved here. They have an affinity toward the Jewish people because they're Jewish, uh, but their brothers and sisters reject them. So the kids. Uh, so this is a long long answer, but the kids are. Um, are dealing with this uh, this situation as um, as sort of first firstborn in Zion, so to speak, and so their 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 identity, I think, is much more uh, tied into being Israeli, not American, not British. They're they're Israeli uh, youth, young adults. They're believers, but they've already they've been through the process of going through school and and uh, and the army, some of them, and so they've had the the insecurities of being believer, a lot of them washed out. So this is really, it's a ripe field, you know, it's a, it's a, it, there's a lot of potential and they can, um, you know, and on the other side there's also the secular Israelis, you know, and yeah. there, there are religious Jews, but I'd say that on the, on the most part, uh, our generation, I'm talking like 18 to 30, um, in Israel are secular, they're, a lot of them are moving to, this is a, apart from the, the believers, they're moving to um, Tel Aviv, uh, where it's sort of the center of Western yep. <laughs> culture, a lot of them are moving out of uh, of the country, which is hard for their parents because their parents took a big risk in moving here, and, and now their kids are leaving. So it's a very uh, it's a very awkward spot. You know, it's hard to live in Israel as a kid. It's hard to um, you know make a living like you see on MTV. Mm. Um, but at the same time, uh, there's so much potential, and you know, the, but it takes uh, somebody an entrepreneurial sort of mindset to really dig in, like the first kibbutzniks, you know, who really just, you know, plowed this land, and, uh, you know, it's peop- it takes vision to be able to make that happen. Yeah. Now, you do a special worship night here called the Deep End. What's that about? Well, we were initially asked to come. Uh, Wayne Hilton, uh, the, the senior pastor at uh, King of Kings, um, had asked us to uh, uh, to start some kind of uh, worship night. And uh, as far as our giftings are concerned, my wife and myself, uh, myself, uh, we were, uh, we're we're gifted in that in that area, and we've been working towards it for uh, uh, towards some kind of worship nights and, and stuff like that for you know over t- like over two years before we were conceptualizing a worship night for over two years before we came here, and the worship night that we conceptualized was one that u- utilized media and um, and all sorts of different media um, to. Uh, uh, to communicate the gospel without necessarily preaching, so that the the words and the mm. not the preaching's bad, preaching's great, um, but we want to redeem, you know, songwriting. We want to redeem all these things and bring real meat to to songs and have. Uh, uh, so we, basically, the whole night we we pray about it. We get a we get a message from the Lord. We and we communicate it through song, through uh, through movie clips, let's say, through. Uh, dramatic presentations through testimony, and then lots of scripture readings. It's very, uh, it's very Anglican actually that way. We, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's funny, but my my wife and I, we we spent about. Uh, she grew up as an Anglican, and I was five years ministering in an Anglican church, and really grew to love liturgy and and uh, and just the, um, just how people have a, such a respect for, uh, at least the the church uh, has a, such a respect for the scriptures, and it's you know all over the prayer book. It's it's everywhere. So. You know that's something that we've brought with us into yeah. this uh, into the setting. And you know you have this you have a liturgy of the evening. Uh, it's very free and it's uh, it's charismatic as well. But you have these these moments where we just we return to scripture and we just read the scripture and the scripture scripture speaks speak for itself. Yeah. So with the help of worship, do you actually write your own songs? Yeah, I've been uh, uh, I've been writing songs for about um, um, I think ten years now, um, maybe more than that, about twelve years. Uh, I started leading worship uh, sort of out of a crisis mode. I was I'd always made fun of. Pe- I, I I remember telling my mother I'd never play the guitar, and telling my uh, somebody else that you know male worship leaders should not waste their time because the girls sound better when they <laughs> sing. <laughs> and so so I uh, and then the Lord mocks me because now uh, you know that's what I do. I I write songs and I'm a male worship leader who plays the guitar. <laughs> uh, so no, I've been writing songs for. Uh, uh, for about 12 years, and for me, like I said earlier, my my real passion is is um, is really to I guess communicate uh, the gospel exegetically, which sort of means a real uh, deep I guess Bible study 
um, like preparation that will go into a sermon. I, I view, like Charles Wesley and uh, all those old great hymn writers, uh, that's how most of the world uh, knows their theology. You know, they're great writers who are yeah. taught theology, but uh, the, the common people, the uh, um, you know, it's what lasts. You know, yeah. our song, songs last, and if you have songs that teach uh, uh, about the gospel and share the good news and teach about theology, that lasts as well. So that's what I try to incorporate into my music. Yeah. Now you're just about to embark on a brand new project. What's that? It's uh, it's called Shir Shir Echad, which means one song. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we after, shortly after we started uh, with the with the deep end, uh, w- it was initially just for the for this congregation, just because a lot of young adults in this congregation, and just to have worship night for them. And uh, maybe so, maybe we thought that some people from Jerusalem would come around as well. But within the first few, we had people coming from all over the country. You know, um, you know, we had people from Haifa, from Tiberias, from Beersheba, you know, so Tel Aviv, all over coming and that's um that's a big deal in in Jerusalem I mean in Israel because uh y- even though you know for a, a western mindset you know a two and a half hour drive is no big deal in Israel that's an eternity you yeah. know <laughs> driving half an hour forget about it from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv it's only 45 minutes apart you know that's that seen as a big trip for a lot of Israelis and, and so it just what it really communicated was a hunger a hunger to worship a hunger to um to uh to spend time together worshiping the Lord, and so we felt that we needed to to do something more on a national scale. Uh, we're going to be um, uh, having our first uh, uh, meeting up in the in Haifa uh, in a club uh, called City Hall, uh, and um, you know, so it's it's very it's a good opportunity to gather the our generation, uh, and mostly the heart of it is to is to gather a generation to be in a place where uh, where where God. Uh, uh, can move that we that we meet God and mm. be changed by Him, and just like Moses when he would go into the tent of meeting, uh, the glory of the Lord would descend as as God and Moses would meet together, and Moses would leave and he'd have to veil his face because uh, he was shining with the glory of God. Um, likewise, um, you know, we we feel that that's uh, uh, that's what we're we're called to spend time in the presence of God and to move out from there and impact the world by being light in the darkness um, and uh, so you know the heart the heart scripture for uh, Shir Echad is Psalm 24 and uh, you know some portions who may ascend the hill of the Lord who may stand in his holy place he with clean hands and a pure heart who is not with his soul to an idol uh, such as the generation and that seeks your face O God of Jacob and then it fr- and we want to be that generation that seeks the face of God. We want to be the generation that's, that stands in in His presence, that um, is uh, is is like Moses, uh, radiating His glory, mm. being uh, uh, being the aroma of of Christ to those who are being brought to, uh, of life uh, to those who are being brought to life, and of death to those who are being brought to death. We want to be uh, the living presence of of Christ on earth, and that's what the church is called to be anyway. Um, and um, and then, uh, um, and then it goes into the portion in Psalm 24 where it talks about uh, lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift up your ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. And that uh, we see it as that sort of a preparing the way of the Lord. You know, so as we seek, the, uh, it's not a formula, but uh, we believe that as as we seek uh, the face of God as a generation, as uh, you know, it, doesn't, it could be this time. It doesn't have to be our age group. It can be this time and this this place. As we seek Him together, only good things can happen, <laughs> you know. And what's going to happen is, as we're changed by Him, we're going to change people around us. Uh, and I keep I have this picture of this little Galilean kid, you know, maybe a 14-year-old coming from Tiberias to this uh, uh, this gathering and leaving from there, changed, impacting his community. And and in a sense, in effect, what he's doing is he's preparing the way of the Lord because uh, he's he's changing hearts. And we know that preparing the way of the Lord, the Spirit of Elijah, um, uh, John the Baptist said. Uh, you know, repent uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, mm-hmm. and so ultimately, I guess it's a shir uh, is a is a call to, uh, uh, I guess, um, to organize the troops to to change our generation. Mm-hmm. So, for people who'd like to know more about your music, you have a website. What is that? Yeah, well, that's nice. Uh, it's uh, www. dot dot com. That's J E S S C A N as in Norman, T E L O N as in Norman 
com and uh, there's samples of music there you can check it out um, and uh, that's, a, that's a good place to go if you have MySpace you can go to uh, www.myspace.com backslash J-E-S-S-C-A-N-T-E-L-O-N